A true 911 call for a child in distress turns into one of the most bizarre murder kidnapping cases yet. A 13 year old jumps into action to save her mom. At the same time, their car slides down an embankment. A 14 month old is electrocuted in a freak accident and a five-year-old receives an award for bravery. Let's dive in. Jane Kowalski contacted 911 to report seeing a child in distress in a moving car, but no officers were alerted. The victim was not a child, but was actually Denise Amber Lee, who had been kidnapped from her Florida home on January 17, 2008. She was later murdered. 911, where's your emergency? Well, I'm on 41 going south and uh, I'm gonna do a cross street right now. It's at, I'm on Chamberlain, I just crossed Chamberlain, I'm on 41 going south. And I was at a stoplight and a man pulled up next to me and there was a child screaming in the car. Not what a happy. kind of vehicle was he in? It's a blue Camaro, uh, like a Camaro, like a, in the 90s or early 2000s or something. Okay, it was a baby or? No, it was a child. It was that more than a- old? I, you know what, it's dark, and I and I turn to look at him, and he's a white male, sort of light-colored hair, sort of plump. He's behind me now, and I tried to slow down so he could pass me, and I could read his license okay. plate. ma'am, don't hang up, okay? I'm, I'm not. Okay. Okay. Where are you now? 41 Okay. I am, um, I'm going to pass across the street, and he, I believe he's still behind me. I'm at uh, Jinx. Drive. I'm just crossing it. I'm going very slow, like 35 miles an hour on 41. And he's behind I, you? I believe he's behind me. He has not passed me, and he's going slower than I am, which is not right because we're, like, we're holding up traffic and stuff. But I think that he saw me look at him, and I'm not trying to be over dramatic here, but he's going even slower now. And I, is he pulling over? No, he, something's going on because he's even going even slower now. Okay. But he's, right behind me. And I don't know if the kid was, it's, I don't know. Hey, your name? Okay, my name's Jane. Okay, he's pulling over to the other lane now. Jane Kowalski, K-O-W-A-L-S-K-I. And give me your cell phone number in case I lose you. 813-205. Okay, he's, he's going to turn. 205-4100. Oh, shit. And he's, okay. he's going to turn left on Toledo Blade. He's turning left right now, um, and it, it, it is, and I, I'm I'm in the other lane. And, you're going yeah. southbound, and he's turning west onto the left lane. <laughs> and, right, and it's like a blue. I want to say like a Camaro type of car, white male. Okay. And, and there's a kid in the back seat, and, and they kept banging on the window. Went left on Toledo Blade. About how old is this child? Can you? Tell I did. Me? I did see the child. I'd say less than ten. Definitely not an infant. Old enough to bang on the window. Okay, seven to ten. I I I don't know. Five to ten. Okay, now it's green and they they're in the arrow green arrows and he's going now. He's now turning left on Toledo Blade. Yeah. Do you want me to? Do you want me to turn? Try to follow him or? Okay. Does he want her to follow him? Okay, can you turn? Oh, oh, he just turned on Toledo Blade. I don't know if I can catch up. There's a bunch of traffic and I can't get over. Um, oh boy. There's a child in the car, someplace between five and ten, and it was banging on the window and screaming and crying and screaming, oh, <laughs> like screaming, 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 screaming. Okay. and not a happy scream, like "get me out of here" scream. Left on Toledo Blade. And you said it's a blue Camaro? Blue or black, very dark. He's a white male. And uh, I want to say uh, sort of light colored hair, maybe a little in the face. Not, I, didn't, I don't think obese. But I'm way past there now. For me to go catch him, I don't know if I'd ever be able to go back. I mean, I would never stop okay, him. I'm not going to put have, myself at risk. But. Okay, and I've got your phone number. 813-205-4100. Uh, 205-4100. And your first name again? It's Jane Kowalski, K-O-W-A-L-S-K-I. I mean, I hope they weren't just playing around. To me, it sounded like the kid was okay. squiging and panicky, and I don't know. But um, I, I, instead of taking a chance, I just wanted to make sure I called it in. I'd feel terrible if something okay, would have Okay, no, I'm very glad you did, ma'am. That's exactly what you should do. Okay, can, well, you can, lost him, and thank you now, and we really appreciate you calling us. Okay, can someone follow up with me? I mean, or... Wait, what? hold on, ma'am. Okay. What? Okay, 
the vehicle turned left on Toledo Blade off of 41 southbound. She is no longer with the vehicle. The vehicle had a white male, white male driver, blue or black Camaro. Male had light hair, and there was a child screaming in the car. So, and banging on the window. Okay. And banging on the window. Oh, like left. Okay. I've got everybody hollering at me, and I may need you to pull over. So just bear with That's me. That's fine. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm going to just pull over now. Let me get over. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I'm glad you called in. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, I don't know if there's a um, an Amber Alert out or something like that, but bear with me. And where are you pulling over? I just pulled over into the Toys R Us. Um, okay, the Town Center Mall. Town Center Mall. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. I'm from Tampa. So I'm going down to Fort Myers to visit my sister. I don't even know where I am actually, but okay. You're going where? I'm going down to Fort Myers to visit okay. my grandmother and my sister. So there's a Chili's there, and there's a yep. Toys R Us. Exactly where you are. Tell me what kind of car you're in. It's a, a silver Mercedes 380 SL. Okay. If you just sit there. And your doors are locked, right? <laughs> oh, well, sit. yeah, I mean. I, no, no, I mean, yeah. sit in the car. I always have my doors locked. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea, actually. Sure. the car. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, Liz, I appreciate you holding on, Jane. No problem. I just, well, I, actually, I hope it's not to be nothing, really. It, but, I mean, I would never. She's pulled over in the Toys R Us parking lot. Do they want contact with her? Okay. Jane, we have your phone number. If we need you, we'll call you back. You'll be on that cell phone number if we need you, right? Absolutely, and don't hesitate. I'll give you whatever information I can give you. Okay, and we really appreciate you calling in. Yeah, okay. I, well, God, I hope. Oh, man, oh, man. Okay. Thanks, um, Jane. All right, thank Just you. Drive careful. Oh, I shall. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. A loving husband and wife, two beautiful children, and a charming home in Sunrise. A family that was torn apart by the brutal murder of devoted mother and wife, Denise Lee. Denise and her husband, Nathan Lee, were only teenagers when they first met. Nathan had described meeting Denise as love at first sight, and the two married in 2006 after they had their first son, Noah. In July 2007, their second child, Adam, was born. Despite their young age, the couple was determined to make their family their number one priority. Denise would stay at home with the kids while Nathan worked hard to support his family. We had two beautiful kids and were just, you know, just living the American dream, Nathan said. Until suddenly one day, the dream was shattered. January 17th, a Thursday, began like any other. Denise was home taking care of their two children, two-year-old Noah and six-month-old Adam, while Nathan was at work. At around lunchtime, Nathan and his wife had a brief conversation about the unusually warm weather and wished each other a good day ahead. Denise had opened the windows for some fresh air. At around 3 p.m., Nathan called Denise again to tell her that he was on his way home from work, but she did not answer or return the call. To his surprise, he tried calling his wife eight more times during the 25-minute drive home. As he pulled into the driveway of their Sunrise home, Nathan saw that the windows which Denise said she had opened during their call earlier that day were now closed. Upon entering the home, he realized that Denise's cell phone and keys were on a chair. He noticed that the windows were closed but not latched and that both children were in the same crib, and his heart sank as he discovered that the person who had put the children there was not his loving wife. He contacted 911, and as soon as he alerted authorities made a call to Denise's father, police officer Rick Geoff, a 25-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office of Charlotte County. Within 30 minutes, police on foot, in vehicles, search dogs, and helicopters were on the scene, combing the area for Denise. Officers asked neighbors if anyone had seen anything, not expecting to get any answers, but one neighbor reported something. She told police that at around 2.30 p.m., she saw a white male pull into the Lee's driveway, but when she looked out of her window 10 minutes later, the male and the car were gone. That evening, at around 6.14 p.m., while authorities were still searching for Denise, 911 received a call. It was Denise herself pretending to have a conversation with her kidnapper, trying to keep her conversation casual and attempting to relay as much information as possible to the 911 operator. Denise begged her kidnapper to let her go home to her children. After seven minutes into the call, the kidnapper realized that his phone was missing and the line went dead. Because the phone was a burner, 
Authorities were unable to trace the cult. Still, they were able to determine the name of Denise's captor, Michael Lee King, a 36-year-old unemployed plumber who also lived in North Fork, not far from the Lees. Investigations revealed that King was on the brink of divorce, had a 12-year-old child, and his home was on the verge of foreclosure. Police managed to track down his address, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. No one was home. Only remnants of what was later discovered to be Denise's brutal rape remained. Disturbing traces of a child's blanket and duct tape with Denise's long brown hair stuck to it were found in the bedroom. Little did the police know at the time that King had driven to his cousin Harold Muxlow's house with his victim lying on the floor of the back seat. He had asked his cousin to borrow a shovel, a can of gas, and a flashlight. Denise, found in the back seat, was able to free herself and hastily jumped out of the vehicle and screamed for Harold to call 911. When Harold questioned King, asking what was going on, King forced the woman back into the car and sped away. Harold went back inside his home and informed his 17-year-old daughter, Sabrina, of what he had witnessed. Sabrina called 911 to report the ordeal. Seven minutes after Sabrina called 911, a fourth call was made to the police. Jane Kowalski reported that a man in a Camaro matching the description of the kidnapper's vehicle had pulled up next to her in a traffic light. He allegedly forced something down in the back seat, and Jane told police that she thought she heard a child screaming in distress. Jane later said to reporters, after he does that, a hand comes up from the back seat and is slapping on the window as loud as can be. The caller thought that she was witnessing a child abduction, but it was no child, it was Denise. She told police that she tried to get his license plate, but King made an abrupt left turn and sped off towards Northport. The next time his vehicle was seen, it was too late, again. At 9.15 p.m. that same fateful day, a police officer spotted King's green Camaro and pulled him over. The officer saw a muddy shovel lying in the back seat where Denise had been found only hours before. King was allegedly soaking wet and covered in mud. The phone that Denise had contacted 911 with was found in King's pocket, and the SIM card and battery had been removed. The officer immediately arrested King. The following day, Denise's naked body was found buried in a shallow grave in a muddy field only five miles from where Jane Kowalski had reported seeing the killer. Denise had suffered a fatal gunshot to the head, and DNA evidence also proved that he had sexually assaulted her multiple times. It was later discovered that Jane's call was never reported to the police. The operator who took the call claimed she yelled out to the dispatchers to send a patrol unit to the location of the call. The two dispatchers who failed to send officers to the area blamed shift change and a chaotic environment for the mishandling of the call. Both were later suspended without pay. It was especially difficult for Denise's father who worked at the same police department, to stomach the fact that it was his place of work that was to blame for such a grossly botched call. On January 23rd, King pleaded not guilty to the abduction and murder of Denise Amber Lee. However, Sarasota County prosecutors charged him with the blatant crimes that he committed, and he was sentenced to death. The tragedy of the murder left her family heartbroken, especially her husband and father of their children, Nathan, who said, I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with her. And there wasn't a doubt in my mind, there wasn't a doubt in hers. The best four years of my life, I'm sure, for my whole life, if I was in that situation, I don't know what I would have done, he said. She did everything she could. Denise did everything in her power to save her life. If you don't want to miss new videos of true 911 calls and the stories surrounding them, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. The 13-year-old daughter of Shannon Bennett, Trinity, watched in horror as her mother's car slid over the edge of a cliff and down a 50-meter embankment. The quick-thinking young girl hurried to call triple zero. She was later awarded for her bravery. Emergency services. Hi, can I have any Sorry, just one moment, caller. So, yes, caller, where do you need the fire brigade? Yeah. Hello? Can I please have the fire brigade? Yeah, to where? What's your address? But, um, when you... Do you know what road you're on, or...? No, what, um, what road are you on? Okay, and what's happened there? My mum was going over the was going over the turn and she 
on the edge of the hill. In the car, is she, or? She's in the car. Okay, all right, just bear with me. Okay, just bear with me. I'm just going to try and locate you. Is your mum okay? Yes, she's, just, she's okay. Okay, so what, she, is she in the car or out of the car? She's in the car. Okay, and it's sitting on a ledge, is it? She's on the ledge. Okay, all right, just bear with me. I've just got to find where you are. So, your mum has had a car accident. You're not injured, are you? No, I'm not injured. We haven't really crashed into anything. She's just on the ledge. Okay, all right, no worries. So, your mum's still in the car. Okay, and what was your name, sweetie? How far up is your, is it the ledge, do you think? Um, how far up would the ledge be? How high? How high would the ledge be? About 50 metres. Okay. Got the brigade notified, sweetie. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're her daughter, aren't you? Yeah. And you're out of the car? Yes, I'm out of the car. So you know, there was no accident, your mum just drove over the cliff, was it? Yeah, she's on the edge. She's leaning off the edge. Yeah, no, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. But she just drove over. So you, you didn't hit a tree or anything, she just sort of no, drove over. She, um, she's like, she hasn't gone over the ledge, she's just... Sitting on the edge, edge. yeah, but yeah, yeah, you weren't involved in an accident, there's no injuries. No, there's no injuries, not yet. She's on the, like, the soft shoulder and it's giving way. Okay, no worries. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, sweetie, I've got the brigade. I'm getting all this information to them, okay? They'll get out yeah. there. Okay. Okay. So, how old's your mum? Mum, how old are you? She's 38. Okay, no worries. So, your mum's not able to get out at all? No, she's not able to get out without the car falling on. Okay. Okay, all right. That's my phone number. Yep, no, that's fine, sweetie. I've got that. Look, the brigade's on their way now, okay? Yep. Um, I'm going to stay on the phone with you until they get there, okay? Yep. All right. <laughs> oh. Okay, all right. Trinity, you there, sweetie? Yeah, I'm not okay. She's just gone, has it? Okay. <laughs> Trinity, sweetie, okay, we're getting, we help's on the way, okay, just stay with me. Okay, stay with me, okay. Okay, you there, sweetie? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, all right, okay, I've got the, the brigades on their way, so the car has gone over the edge. She's gone over the edge okay. she's at the bottom. Okay, that's okay. The brigade's on their way, sweetie. Don't you go down. Don't, can you climb down can you climb down safely or is it too dangerous? Yes. It's it's a cave is rock that I can go down. Don't put go you, down you stay on the phone with me, okay? Don't you put yourself in any danger? I'm not I'm not. Don't worry. Okay, you stay on the phone with me, all right? Or the whole time. I'm, I'm, I'm going down now. Yeah, okay, but you be very, very careful, okay? If you're in any Sorry, danger, I will. if you're in any danger, don't go down. You can't help your mum if you hurt yourself, okay? I know. Okay, all right, sweetie. Can yeah. you is, can, can you hear anything from your mother? There's no smoke. Oh, Trinity, Trinity, sweetie. Yeah. There's no smoke or anything coming from the car, is there? There is, there is. There's smoke coming from the car. Yeah. Okay, don't go down there. It could explode, okay? You need to yeah. keep yourself safe. Is it smoke or yeah. steam, do you think? Um, I think it's stopped. I think it's just steam. So it's, still, it's slightly rising, but it's not that bad. That's okay. It's all right. I'll, and the, the car's slow down. Okay, the car's overturned, is it? Yeah. Okay. Where are you now? I'm... I'm halfway down the thing. I'm on a. I'm sitting on a rock. Okay, so you're just sitting there, are you? Yes, is I'm it, halfway down. Okay, are you going to keep going down? Is it safe, or are you going to stay there and wait for help? I think I'll try going down. Is it safe? Is it very steep, or is it okay? It's slightly steep. Okay, you be very, very careful, okay? Don't worry. Okay, all right, sweetie. Can you hear anything? Is your mum making any sound? 
<laughs> okay, that's okay, sweetie. We've got people on the way, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, sweetie, just stay on the phone with me, okay? Yeah, just hang on. Just stay there, Trinity. Don't go away. I won't go away. Don't worry. Yeah, all right. I'm trying to find rocks to climb down. Okay, you need to, as I said, you need to be very careful and look after yourself. You're not going to help your mum if you're injured, okay? I know. Okay, so take your time. Don't rush. Okay, how old are you, Trinity, sweetie? I'm 13 years old. 13. Oh, you're yes. doing a great job, okay? How far away from your mum are you now? I'm... I don't know. Okay, can you... I, I'm not good with heights or anything. Sorry? I'm not good with heights or anything in my dad. Okay, all right. Okay, sweetie. All right. Okay, you just hit, take your time. Take your time. Don't rush. Make sure the, ro the rocks you're standing on are stable, okay? Yeah. Okay, good job. All right, good girl. So, if <laughs> no, Trinity, sweetie. Trinity? I can see her. I can see her. You can see her? I'm trying to look. Okay, just, just be, listen to me, Trinity, sweetie. Yeah. Can you see your mum? Yes, I can. Her legs are sticking up on the car. Her legs are? Yes. Okay. I think what you need to do, sweetheart, is just move yeah. away from the car. There's nothing you can do for your mum at this stage. <laughs> okay, you need to move away to make yourself safe. Even though there's no smoke or steam coming from it, you're not sure what's going to happen, okay? Yeah. So I need you, there's nothing that you can do until a brigade get there, okay? Yeah. So I need you to move away to a safe place and just wait, sweetie. Trinity, sweetie. Yeah. Now, has the car gone from the top of the road yeah, right down to the bottom of that 50 metre drop? Yes. Yeah. So it's right down the bottom, is it? Yes. Okay. All right, sweetie, I need you to move away from the car. There's nothing you I'm can do to away. help your mum at the minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See you yet? Yes. We've opened the door. And okay, it's cool. That's great, sweetie. All right. Just hang on until I get there, okay? I'll stay with you until I get there, okay? Are you there, sweetie? Trinity? Yeah, man. Okay, good girl, sweetie. Okay, so they're yeah, yeah. What are they, what's happening now, sweetheart? Yeah. Trinity, are they coming down to you? No, they're going over there. Trinity's fast-paced decision-making in October 2017 what was what could have made all the difference between life and death. Her mother, Shannon Bennett, had been trying to make a U-turn when the earth beneath her car gave way due to the wet weather. The car skidded down the steep cliff and tumbled to the ground. Trinity did not falter. She hastily jumped into action and contacted emergency services for assistance. The mother and year seven daughter had been driving near Buchan when Shannon spotted a sign for a cave lookout and decided to take a closer look. While she attempted to make a U-turn, the soft ground beneath them gave way and Shannon immediately ordered her daughter to get out of the car as the car was about to tumble down. It felt like it was an action movie unraveling right in front of me. Trinity, now 17, said of the October 2017 emergency. The young girl used her spare hand, wielding the phone connected to triple zero with the other, and carefully scrambled down the incline so that she could see the wreckage below. She told the operator that the vehicle was on its roof and her mother's feet were sticking out of a window. Shannon was rushed to hospital in Melbourne by helicopter and was treated for critical injuries, including a torn aorta and a broken arm that barely missed needing amputation. Shannon spent two weeks in hospital and required 12 months of treatment. Trinity was one of 48 people receiving an Australian bravery decoration in 2021. In a dangerous situation, each recipient was brave, selfless, and put their own safety at risk to help someone else. Governor General David Hurley said of the recipients. Trinity also received an award for commendation for brave conduct and an award from Emergency Services Telecommunications Authority, ESTA, named a 2018 Junior Triple Zero Hero. She was one of the 31 children to receive the award at a ceremony in Melbourne. Ms. Bennett has expressed how proud she was of her daughter and very grateful. To stay cool under such immense pressure, it takes a special person to do that, she said. A heart-stopping call came through from Claire Carlson to Triple Zero in South Nowra, Australia in May 2019, 
after her 14-month-old baby was electrocuted by chewing through electrical wires. Ambulance emergency, what town or suburb? I'm South Mayor, I'm South Wales. You okay, tell me exactly what's happened. Um, I, my son, sir, he, he just pulled the cord down from, from the land and I think he really just hit himself and he's, it looks like he's got a burn on his coat. His coat was so white and I could smell like burning. Okay, so he's been burnt by, what was he burnt by? Oh, the land, he's, he's pulled the cord from the land. Oh, I see. He's completely undone, there's, there's wires. Okay. He's feeding now. Okay, all right. So, um, how old is he? Fourteen months. Fourteen months. Okay, all right. Are you with him now? Yeah. I yep. him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, is he just a boy? And is he awake? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Is he breathing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's blood in his mouth. Okay. All right. And and where is he now? He's in my arms. He's in your arms, okay. Is he away from the power source? Yes. All right. Is he completely alert? Yes. Yes, okay. Is he breathing normally? Yes. Yep, okay. All right, so I'm organising help for you now, okay? So stay in the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Yep. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's all right, okay? He's still awake and he's still breathing. He's crying. That's a really good sign, okay? Okay, so you've got an ambulance coming to you. Okay, I know it's a, it's really scary, but like yeah. I said, the fact that he's he's still awake and he's still yeah. making noises, that's a really good sign. Yeah, All right. thank you. That's okay. He's done super well. Okay. okay, all right, so I'm going to stay with you until they act. Yeah, here's one now. Here's one now? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be okay, all right? Yeah, thank you. That's all right. That's okay. Oh, my God. Claire joins us on the phone now. The Claire. Mom. Hi, Claire. The worst day Hi. of your life, no doubt, that was. Yeah, it was horrible, yeah. And he's doing fine now. Back home, everything's fine. Yeah, he's just got a little scar on his tongue um, and a bit of a um, – he's a bit scared of nurses now, but other than that, he's fine. Oh, wow. Mm. And just in a split second, see these – you don't think for a second – when they're milling around the table where the lamp is, you don't think he's going to junk pull the cord out and get a lick. You don't think did so. He, what did he actually do? Did he pull the cord so, out? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a floor lamp, and he often plays in that area, um, and he's just somehow pulled pulled on the cord, and it's come unattached from where it actually goes into the light fixture. Oh, so it's so attached it's to the wall, plugged in, and now it's pulled out of the lamp, on. live wires. Yeah. Live wires, 240 oh, bucks. Oh, you're so now. lucky. So lucky, really. Yeah, very lucky it wasn't worse than what it was. Now, what about Crystal, uh, the operator of the uh, call yes, taker? Yes, the call taker is on the phone as well. Crystal, Hi, Crystal. Look how calm you were. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Really great to talk with Claire's you. Claire's here as well. Have you guys spoken since the incident? Probably not. No, we haven't. It's so nice to talk to you, Claire, under better circumstances this time. Yes. You too. How do you keep calm in that circumstance, though? Because, like, most people, like, I, I'd go into a panic. Like, I'd be the worst person to call. I think it's, it, I mean, for me, having that paramedic background, I, I can, you know, visualise what's going on on scene, but also knowing that the most important thing is to keep the mum calm. Because, yeah. you know, a baby's going to get really upset if the mum's stressing out. And so we want to keep the mum as, as calm as possible and know that everything is, um, you know, on the way to her and we're going to help her as best we can as an ambulance service. How do you disconnect at the end of the day? Because we're playing the calls that have the happy endings. You would get far worse than what we're hearing. Does that upset you? Do you take it home with you? Uh, I wouldn't say we, depending on the job. Like I know just then listening to that back, I actually got completely caught up in the moment again and I forgot that I was on the phone to you guys actually. <laughs> um, but um, I think, you know, there's, there's always – great stories that come out of our triple zero calls. Yeah, there's some some horrible bad ones, but the fact that we're able to help these people and, and see the difference between when we first talk to them where that, you know, they're really upset and stressed out and by the end of the call, usually we've got them a little bit more under control before the, the paramedics arrive. So I think it's a really rewarding job and I think we, we all get a lot out of it. So yeah, it's good good to work for the ambulance service. It Absolutely. is you guys are amazing. Yeah, you are. Claire, uh, happy days for you at your place. I don't know about you. Are you going to do the same thing I do when, uh, like, I whipped my dog once because it chewed up a nice slipper that I had, and now all I have to do is hold up the slipper for it to realise oh, anything could happen. Will you hold up a cord now if you want to control the child, if the child's misbehaving? Well, 
probably no, wouldn't he, be advisable. He's a little, yeah, a little daredevil. Like he, he will even try and flick powerpoints and everything. Like nothing's oh, stopping him. Uh oh. We, oh, we, no. we have the house baby proof, but we've done a an extra baby proofing around the home house. Yeah, yeah. that's a good lesson yeah. for everyone. Even when you think you've baby proofed the house. Look at it Think again. again. Mm, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Thank you, Claire. Thanks, you Crystal. Can't skim over, right? No worries. In an interview with radio hosts, Kyle and Jackie O, Claire explained how the incident happened. There was a loud bang before little Oscar started screaming. The young mum said the cord was still plugged into the PowerPoint, leading to the baby suffering from 240 volts straight to his mouth. Thankfully, the call taker, Crystal, has a paramedic background, so she managed to keep Claire calm until the emergency services arrived. The 14-month-old was rushed to Shoalhaven District Hospital, where doctors were concerned that the swelling from the burns, especially to his tongue, would block his airways. He was intubated before being taken by helicopter to a children's hospital in Sydney. Oscar suffered burns to the outside of his top lip, inside his bottom lip, on the right side of his tongue. Additionally, he had blisters on the side of his mouth and his palate behind his top teeth. Miraculously, the burns hadn't traveled down his throat or affected his heart, and the injuries were only in his mouth. Initially, the baby was discharged once he started eating and drinking again, but was readmitted after the pain stopped him. Oscar's parents, Claire and Hugh Carlson, said he made a full recovery, but wanted to use the incident to bring awareness to other parents and caretakers. A month after being electrocuted, his mother told a local publication that all the taste buds on his tongue had grown back, and hopefully, there would be no scarring. She said he is just a normal 14-month-old again. He's eating and doing all the things he used to. In fact, the little one even had his own Instagram account with some child modeling work and brand representation. The account has since been changed to at chasing.my.darlings since the family has expanded. The proud parents have always known that Oscar is a fighter after being born with aspirated meconium, which meant his lungs were full of meconium and he was in respiratory distress. He was on a breathing machine, had fluid around his heart, and was quite jaundiced. Another hero caller from Australia, this time, a five-year-old Mount Clear boy guided an ambulance to his mother, Sarah Walker, who fainted on the floor of their family home's lounge in December 2014. The operator remained on the line with the boy until paramedics arrived. Got a call from my uh, my partner's nephew. He's four or five. He's saying that his mum is on the floor and she's unresponsive. She's not breathing, and she's just not answering or responding at all. So she's unresponsive yeah. and not breathing? Yep. Uh, what's the phone number? I'll try and, and talk to him at least to get him to open the door and do a few things for me. Yep, okay. Um, do you want to hang up with what's her number so they can call him and try and get him to do stuff? So? Um, this is Bailey. My mum's in trouble. She is... Her, she's on the ground, sure. Okay. Now, Bailey, we've got an ambulance coming to you there. Just now, what? I know Mum's on the floor. Do you know how she got there? No, she's not even breathing. Okay. Now, the ambulance is already on its way, as I said. I just need to double-check. Is she awake at all? Um, no. No, okay. Bailey, there's a few things that we need to do to try and help Mum. Where's Mum lying right now? She's in the lounge room. She's just in the lounge room. And is she lying on her back or on her belly, or where is she lying? She's on the floor on her back. On the floor on her back? That's really good. What I want you to do for me, we're gonna, I know this is hard, especially given how big you are, but you're doing really well. Yeah. I want you to just check for me. I need you to put your ear next to mum's mouth again really quickly, right next to mum's mouth, and I need you to check if she's breathing for me. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And keep the phone there with you and say now every time she, you hear her breathing. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Good. Start now. First breath. All right. Bailey, has she taken a breath in? Um, I don't know. Can you please put the phone right next to mummy's mouth so I can hear her, see if she's breathing, okay? Count to ten for me. Okay. 
Not really. So is she still breathing? Yes, I think so. Okay. What we're going to do for me, I know that she's on her back already. I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to tell you how to try and help mummy do resuscitation on her, okay? Okay. So can you put your phone on speaker? Yeah, it is. Yeah, very good. What I want you to do is I want you to place your hand. What's what? that? What's that noise I can hear, Bailey? That's mummy. That's mummy making a noise, is it? Yeah. Okay, good. Can you just see if you can wake mummy up at all? Mummy, are you awake? Um, do you need to talk to mummy? Oh, I need you to see if she can wake up at all for me. It's really important so we can tell the ambulance. Okay. I just told her she would like me to say yes. Okay. So she's talking to you now, is she? Um, she was just going, mm, mm, mm. Okay. Did she actually say any words to you, Bailey? No. No? So she's... She's moaning at you when you talk to her. Is she? See if you can get her to respond again. Okay. Mummy. I think she's on the wrong house. Sorry? The ambulance are on the wrong house. Are they? Are you at number seven? Um, no. Look, can you run out the front? You see the ambulance outside, can you? Yeah. Okay, can you run out the front for me? Yeah. Ten zero. So you're at ten, are you? One zero. One. I can see the ambulance. Okay. Now, what I want you to do... Um, Hi. So, you, uh, your mum, are you? Yes. Okay. Bailey was a bit concerned he couldn't wake you up at all and he thought you'd stop breathing, so there's an ambulance coming to pick you out. Sorry? Okay, so you've just you've just woken up on the floor. You're not sure how you got there? No, All right. All right, now I've got to say, Bailey's done an awesome job. He contacted your family who called us, yeah. um, and he's done really well helping when I've called him back there, okay? Yeah. Uh, the ambulance will be with you as quickly as they can. I just Thank want you. you to rest where you are, please. I will, I'll probably the out of him. Sorry? I'll probably the out of him. <laughs> he's done really well, nonetheless. Yeah. All right, let me know when the paramedics are right there with you, okay? Yeah. Hello. Hi, Bailey. Yeah, my name's Daniel. Bailey, I think you've done a fantastic job calling for Mum today, okay? And thank yeah. you very much for all of your help. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll leave you with the ambulance now, okay? You've done a great job, Bailey. Yeah. All right. I'll leave you with the paramedics. Take care, mate. Yeah. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. A day like any other went a little haywire when five-year-old Bailey Woodruff came to the rescue when his mother fainted. Bailey was one of the 26 children across Australia who received an ESTA award for bravery presented by the Victorian Emergency Services Minister Jane Garrett for his successful efforts to guide paramedics to his family home when his mother fainted suddenly. Bailey was on the line with emergency operator Daniel Torney, and with the guidance of the operator, Bailey was able to confirm that his mother was breathing on their living room floor. Thanks to his parents teaching him how to contact emergency service and his home address from a young age, the boy was able to give directions to his home address. Sarah was taken to the hospital and expressed how proud she was of her son when he visited her that night with his dad. There were tears and cuddles all around. His dad, Josh Woodruff, told reporters he broke down when he heard the audio of Bailey's phone conversation to the emergency services operator at the award ceremony where his son was given a junior triple zero hero award for his bravery. I just hugged him and I didn't want to let go, Ms. Walker said. I was stunned that he knew what to do because many kids that age would not know to call their family or what to do if they were talking to an emergency operator. Mr. Torney also attended the award ceremony where he gave Bailey a teddy bear signed by comedian Dave Hughes. 
Bailey named the teddy bear Daniel after Mr. Torney. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting, and subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.